Okay, so the Feast of the Holy Family. Um, we talk a lot about the family here, and uh, that's because we're mostly young families. So I don't have to tell you that uh, a lot of dramatic things happen in families, yeah? Stressful things. It's just a, it's an atmosphere of stress. And the amazing thing for us, like a point of contemplation, is that Joseph and Mary were really stressed out. Like they were under a great deal of strain. They have apparitions. They have, you know, the threat of like societal shame because of their situation. They got to do really hard location changes uh, for the time. You got to worry about birthing a baby in a dirty animal stall. I mean, like, when I worked on a horse ranch, like, I cannot imagine, like, having to, like, do anything in a stall, you know, other than have animals there. So it's this very, like, it's just stressful. It's just like a stressful atmosphere. Sometimes I don't think we, we think of them that way. We don't think of the Holy Family that way. It's just like, it's all hunky-dory, like, no problem. You know, but in reality, there was objective pressure. I think of, like, the pressure I feel when somebody hands me, like, a regular baby, you know? Like, and then I'm just like, oh, my goodness, I don't want to, you know, like, what do I do with this? Um, but somebody hands you God, you know, this, we can't underestimate what they were going through. They went from living fairly normal lives, bacon bread and... Uh, making tables, you know, just like simple things, to being entrusted with the God of the universe wrapped in human flesh. And so it, it was an incredibly stressful time. What we want to look at is how they handled that stress. Because when we look at how they handled it, it actually shows us why they're the people that God chose to raise them. Their character shines through. So what kind of people were they? What kind of character did they have? In the midst of absolute chaos, and all of that stuff that I just mentioned is absolute chaos, if you have to go through it, they were obedient and prayerful and docile to the will of God. They were obedient and prayerful and docile to the will of God. And when they got back to Nazareth, the Scriptures say the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. What's necessary for children to grow and get stronger and be righteous? It's for your parents to be obedient and prayerful and docile to the will of God. They're creating the atmosphere in which you can grow to that. Mary and Joseph were that atmosphere. They were the best parents anyone has ever had. God hand-selected them to form the human nature he took on to himself. They were perfectly safe, perfectly loving, perfectly attentive, perfectly affirming, perfectly patient, and perfectly kind. You know whose parents are like that? Nobody. Absolutely nobody. These people were unlike any parents that have ever lived. Regular parents usually don't handle stress that well, right? So that leads to a whole host of issues for their kids. And we don't have to look very far into our mind or our memory to, to think about those things for ourselves probably. It's another way of saying <clears throat> all of us are hurt in some way from our family of origin. And so where does that leave us? Well, in this parish, most of you have been called uh, by God to have a biological family of your own. You know? And we've talked about uh, the reality before that if we don't deal with our own family of origin brokenness, we'll just automatically pass it on to kids. It's not malicious. It's just, it's the water in which they swim. And we went over uh, a bunch of things that we could do to address that in the series on the family, but the church gives us today the ultimate way. It's just being with and in the Holy Family ourselves. It's being with and in the Holy Family ourselves. This is one of those 
mystical realities that we can participate in in our Catholic faith. That family, how they treated each other, how they talked to each other, how they respected each other, is the living solution to any family deficit in our hearts. They're the solution. If we're baptized, we're in that family. So everything they had, everything they enjoyed, we have access to. Think about that. That's crazy. If we didn't get something that we really needed from our family, or maybe we got a whole lot of something that nobody needs, they have the ability to give us a surplus of what we didn't get. And they have the ability to take from us what we don't need. And it brings them incredible joy to do that. It's not a burden for them to do that. It's a delight. We're a delight to them. I'll let you into my inner self just for a second for the sake of an example. Sometimes I use my imagination. God gives us our imagination, right? Uh, to think about what heaven's going to be like. You ever do that? Just in your prayer time, you just kind of like let your imagination go. Scriptures say that we can't even conceive of it. Totally impossible. You know, it'd be like trying to run quantum computing on like a calculator from the 60s. Like it just, it doesn't have what it takes. And so at this point, we don't have what it takes to even capacitate what it's going to be like. It's too complex. It, it, it's too far beyond us. But it is a good and worthy spiritual exercise to just kind of try to think about it and push ourselves in that direction. And so when I'm thinking about what heaven's going to be like, I also think about specifically like some things that I could ask for. Now, we're going to be perfectly satisfied, but I do think we're going to be able to ask for things. And at the very top of my list, you know, after the dust of being integrated into reality itself kind of settles, like I want to have dinner with the Holy Family in the Holy House, the house where Jesus grew up. And I'd like Mary to just make whatever meal they liked best, like the three of them. And then we sit down at the table, we pray, we laugh, we eat, and we just enjoy each other with nothing but eternal time on our hands. Just sitting in that space in my mind heals my heart. And healed people heal people. If you want to be healed of whatever you had going on in your childhood, if you want your kids to be healed people, the kind of people that God uses to actually do His will in the world, spend time in your heart with and in the Holy Family. And eventually you're going to notice that your heart begins to intuitively know how to make your family holy. Holy.